This is a tutorial on how to animate emotes without an animation program or any previous animation skills. It's actually super simple, so I'm excited to share. Quick disclaimer, if you are animating someone else's artwork, that being something you commissioned or pre-made emotes, you'll need permission from the artist to animate it. Why? Because that's the standard in the art industry. Artists hold the rights to the art in most cases, unless the contract states otherwise. So check with them first. Now, I make lots of emote tutorials, hi, I'm Shy Fox, on how to draw and animate emotes, so please like and subscribe to ensure you see more of what I have to teach, all the secrets. I have a dedicated playlist for emote creation you can check out. On to how to do this then. Now, the type of animation we are doing is frame by frame. This is different from your smooth animation styles that you see that are more complex, but I intend to make a tutorial on that after this one, so keep an eye out for that video. It'll end up in the playlist as well. So this frame by frame animation requires no animation program, and these are the steps. So step one is a bit of forethought, some planning. If you're making your emote for Twitch, for example, there's some things to be aware of, some parameters that you need to work within. So quickly, we're just pulling up the Twitch information on animated emotes and what's required. You can read through this. It does get updated with uh, new parameters and things every once in a while. So it says things, for example, like the sizing needs to be between 112 and 112 uh, and 4096 by 4096. Uh, if you're doing a single size and then otherwise you can do the three sizes. So GIF images must be a square shape. So for example, 500 by 500 pixels is an acceptable size. Uh, one megabyte file size max for auto size resize mode. That would be these. And then if using the manual mode, each of the file sizes cannot e exceed 512 kilobytes. That would be for these three. So watching your file sizes, that for us is really unlikely to be an issue just because frame by frame animation means less frames. So the file sizes will be smaller. Note that the thumbnail for the animated emote will be the, uh, will default to the first frame. So whatever your first frame is, is gonna represent the emote when it is still and unanimated. So that's kind of important to keep in the back of your mind. And then GIF images cannot be more than 60 frames. That's our limit. But again, we're literally doing two, three, maybe four animation uh, frames here. And then I guess this is one of the new ones, must not flash or flicker more than three times within one second period. But anyway, I'll link this in the description for you to look at and refer back to for when you're creating yours. And of course, maybe you're not doing this for Twitch. You may wanna check out the parameters on other platforms like YouTube, but odds are they're gonna be really similar and keeping files to smaller sizes is kind of one of the key points. And of course they need to be square. So the next step is really to open your emote art or draw it for the first time in your art program. You could use Procreate, you could use a mobile app on your phone, like IBIS Paint is actually a decent one. As long as you can save your image in the end as a tr with a transparent background as a PNG file, then you're, you'll be okay. I'm using Clip Studio Paint here, which does have animation capabilities. I did a previous emote tutorial on how to animate in Clip Studio Paint, which was also frame by frame animation. Uh, and that one had like 24 frames in it. And so that's been covered, but this again is a tutorial with no animation program required, much simpler. So we have our emote art file open or Alternatively, we did draw one. I'd recommend some forethought on how you envision the animation to go. So in my example, I was envisioning the only thing moving is the confetti. So it starts like this um, and then it just, the confetti moves. Now I'm clicking like this. It has transparency to the backgrounds. Uh, so the confetti is overlapping and uh, that's fine. So we could click them on and off. But to actually test how the animation's kind of gonna go, that'll come in the following uh, steps here. But you technically can test them out by putting um, a white layer or something behind each one. So turn this on, white layer. Okay. And for simplicity, I'm gonna put them in folders as a group. So these two in a folder. And if you're like, what the heck are you doing? Like, I'm really lost. Don't worry, you don't have to do this step, but if you'd kind of like to test the animation, this is how I would recommend doing it. You can kind of see here. 
Harder to do with the three frame animation, really easy with the two frame, because click, 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 just two frames, you really get a sense of it. And if you're finding clicking this way isn't giving you a good sense of it, no worries, we'll do that in the following step. But in this case, we've drawn the emotes and we have to draw each, the emote once again, um, not redraw, but modify it on a different layer. So I'm just gonna undo these crazy folders, assuming that's confusing. Okay, so we really just have our three frames over here in our layer, layer panel, one, two, three, and uh, each one was just modified. The only thing I changed, I later, literally copy paste, you know, the Gengar itself, and then I put the confetti in in the first one, and then I literally just moved them around, and the layers were super helpful for this, so I wasn't like messing with the Gengar part of the picture. Gengar remained unchanged. So yeah, just make, modifying the, the confetti for each image and then merging them together as one image. So this is one image, this is one image, this is one image, and they're each different. So to test how this is gonna look and ultimately save it as a GIF file, we need to export each layer or each of the frames, each one of these images is a frame, as a PNG. So we're gonna go file, we can go to export as PNG. All right, so find a place to save it. You'll notice it says PNG. And a really key point is that the image you're saving at that exact moment right here, we don't need to change anything, um, but just that it has the transparent background. And I could see there, it did have the transparency background because it had the little checker in that display window. So. We turn that one off, we turn this one on, and we can uh, now save this one, file, export, um, PNG. You can see it's got transparency here as we export it and save it. You can also just test in your art program with a new layer, pick a color, throw it behind the layer you're gonna save and like, oh, I can see it, all right, it's transparent after all. That's a quick just test. Okay, and let's do our last one. Turn this one on so we can see it and we're gonna export it. Perfect. Let's take our PNGs to the next step. So you're gonna wanna make your way over to this website, easygif.com slash maker. And I'll put that linked in the description. So go to choose files. So locate your emote frames, select them all and open. Says we have three files, that's correct. Upload and make GIF. Now we're gonna have to modify some things because how it starts out isn't uh, going to be quite right. You can reorder these to test um, how it might look with a different order, but assuming we've uploaded them in the order we intend, we'll just leave it. And then the next thing is the delay time. We're gonna leave it at 20 and see how it looks and leave loop whatever. Uh, we want it to loop forever, so leave it. And then this one we must check, don't stack frames. All right, so just check this box, that's all you need. So make a GIF. For whatever it's worth, I didn't mention it, this is a 500 by 500 pixel canvas. That's why it looks this size. Okay, and uh, the animation looks actually pretty decent right now. If you wanted to speed it up or slow it down, that's where this comes in, delay time. Let's say we wanted to slow it down. Let's try 30. So you can just trial and error to see how it looks. Maybe we're like, oh, this, this is what I want. This is the right speed. So we could call it done. And the only job left to do then is save. So we can save it and it will download. This site is good because it allows us to keep that transparency background and save it as a GIF. And this was then all done with no animation program, really. This, I guess this website technically animated it, but yes, no fancy official animation program was required. Pretty soon here, I'll be live streaming on YouTube itself, showing a slower and more in-depth emote making process, including animating. So keep an eye out for live streams here and or watch back previous streams once I had them, if you wanna learn in a slower and more detailed uh, way. And that is all, hope this helps you. So be sure to like and subscribe for more emote tutorials and art tutorials in general. Comment your questions and thoughts. Have a good one.